Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to explain working of a Type C chopper. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you will be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get into our topic for today. This is the circuit diagram of a Type C chopper. We have already seen the working of a Type A and Type B chopper. So this is basically the combination of both Type A and Type B with respect to the circuit diagram is concerned. How do we analyze these type of circuit? The entire circuit can be analyzed considering four cases. Case 1 when the switch CH1 is on, how does the circuit look like? It's very convenient if we draw equivalent circuits to uh, the circuit diagram so that we can easily analyze them. So the equivalent circuit looks something like this when CH1 is triggered. Consequently, we have to assume that Vs is greater than E. So only then current will flow in this particular direction. That is from the supply voltage Vs to E. One important basic thing that you have to remember is current always flows from higher potential region to lower potential. Since Vs is greater than E that we are assuming, current always flows in this direction. If E was greater than Vs, it will flow in the opposite direction. So please remember this point. So now current starts flowing in this direction, inductor starts charging in this polarity and consequently it comes back to the DC source in this particular fashion. So inductor charges with a polarity plus and minus and what is the nature of output current and voltage? Important inferences with respect to this case is output current is positive. How do I say so? If you see current is flowing from the source to the load, as a result it is positive and output voltage is plus Vs. How is it so? Now if you are measuring the voltage between these two points, if you are considering these, this is the load, isn't it? So whatever is supplied is appearing across the load terminals. As a result, output voltage is plus Vs and it corresponds to first quadrant operation because current is also positive, voltage is also positive. As a result, we will say it is operating in first quadrant. Case 2. Now I will turn off CH1. What happens to the circuit? So in that case, the circuit looks like this. And if you carefully observe, inductor had plus and minus polarity. Now it will change as minus and plus. Why is it so? It does not allow sudden change in current. And current still flows in the same direction according to the property of Lenz law. In order to ensure that the current still flows in the same direction, it will reverse its polarity, acts as an energy source and starts supplying the energy that is stored in the inductor. Now consequently, if you observe over here, minus terminal is applying appear, appearing across this point of the diode that is FD that is there. So as a result, FD becomes forward biased and consequently starts conducting and access short circuit hence current flows through this direction this direction this direction and comes back to the inductor in this particular fashion as a result if you carefully see now current is still flowing in the same direction like over here it was in the downward direction and over here it's still in the downward direction so whenever it is in downward direction conventionally the output current is still positive and output voltage is zero because this is short circuit and if you measure the output voltage at, at this point what happens it will be showing you a zero volt because there is a short circuit in the circuit isn't it so the output voltage will be equal to zero consequently since output voltage is zero we'll still consider it as positive and current is also positive as a result it operates in first quadrant i hope this concept is clear now now what happens to case 3 i have still considered the circuit for reference so now when the switch ch2 is on now i'll be turning on ch2 and consequently the equivalent circuit looks in this particular fashion so in this case what happens the emf so energy in the inductor is already discharged in the previous cycle now again what happens the inductor starts storing in this particular fashion because emf the battery that is there will start supplying the current as a result current flows through this path it starts with the polarity plus and minus it will start charging in this particular fashion and it will start flowing through this particular path through the chopper ch2 consequently returns through this path so what is the inference over here if you see now the battery emf e is actually supplying the current so as a result output is current is in the opposite direction if you carefully observe so the output current is negative output voltage is zero because this is actually a short circuit so if, previously we saw with respect to freewheeling diode isn't it as a result if you measure the output voltage between these two points this will be short circuited and hence it acts as redundant network and the output voltage is zero hence this confirms that it operates in second quadrant operation because output current is negative so when output current is negative and the output voltage is zero so current is negative and output voltage is positive Volt voltage zero is considered to be positive so it operates in second quadrant so what is case four when switch CH2, which was initially conducting previously, will be turned off now. So what happens to the circuit? The equivalent circuit looks something like this. Now, one important thing is with respect to inductor. 
inductor had charged the uh, with the polarity minus and plus now it will reverse its polarity because current still still flow in the same direction according to the property of lenz law so it will reverse its polarity and acts as energy source and d2 starts conducting because plus terminal is appearing across the anode terminal of d2 and hence it starts conducting and current starts flowing in this direction this direction comes to the dc voltage source and comes to this point and in this particular direction so what is the inference so now battery E and inductor is actually supplying energy to the source as a result current is flowing from the load to the source so output current is obviously negative what happens to the output voltage output voltage is positive because if you measure the voltage at this point it will obviously be equal to the supply voltage over here so that is why we will be considering it as Vs this corresponds to second quadrant operation because output current is negative output voltage is positive so it is in second quadrant of operating so this is how we will be analyzing the operation now what is that we can infer from the overall cases so we can analyze the waveforms so we will be considering the gating pulses for ch1 in this particular fashion ch1 should be on and ch uh, one should be off for a greater duration than on time that is why if you see over here it is on for certain duration and off for a greater duration than on time so again these are reference lines that i've drawn now ch2 is on when ch1 is off that is what ch1 is off and ch2 conducts isn't it so that is how we were explaining the cases as well similarly it is considered so what is the nature of inductor current or load current because this current flowing through the inductor will be the current flowing through the load because they are connected in series isn't it so initially when ch1 is on current starts increasing because inductor starts charging and once it reaches a point where CH1 is also off, CH2 is also off and previously CH1 was on. Consequently, it conducts and it starts discharging through the freewheeling diode. As a result, it is indicated in this particular fashion. In the next cycle, what happens? CH2 is on. So because of CH2, the current will still flow but in the opposite direction. That is from the load to the source, isn't it? So as a result, it will be in the negative direction and it is a due to ch2 now again the energy that was stored uh, in the inductor will be discharged and hence it is decreasing in this particular fashion it was increasing in the negative direction because it was charging because of ch2 now it is discharging because of d when both ch2 and ch1 are off provided ch2 was previously on so based on that cycle the output current or the inductor current will be decided i hope this concept is clear so what is the next thing that is the output voltage Output voltage will be positive that is equal to plus Vs when CH1 is on. So after CH1 is turned off from that point the output CH1 goes to turning off condition consequently the output voltage will become equal to zero still when it will be equal to zero up till diode D starts conducting. So that is where because of uh, the freewheeling diode and CH2 the output voltage will be short circuited as shown in this equivalent circuits and consequently uh, after D when D starts conducting the output voltage will again go positive up to CH1 when CH1 is on it still becomes equal to plus Vs and again it goes to zero once CH1 is off. So this is how we will be analyzing the waveforms. I hope you were able to analyze these on your own. So what is the conclusion that we can draw? So it operates in first and second quadrant. That is, uh, it operates in first quadrant when CH1 and freewheeling diode is on and it operates in second quadrant when CH2 and D2 is on. So this is important to be observed and as a whole we can conclude that average output voltage is always positive whereas average output current can be positive or negative. Therefore it operates in first and second quadrant. Since it operates in first quadrant second quadrant so so due to this we can say that the motor it can be used for motoring and regenerative braking motoring mode when it is operating in the first quadrant regenerative braking mode when it is operating in the second quadrant as a result these are popularly used because it uses both type a and type b configurations isn't it when a circuit has features of both uh, both a and b configurations that is type a and type b configurations why not use it so that is why type c configurations has found its way and it is quite popular i hope you were able to analyze the operation and working uh, with waveform of a type C chopper on your own. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. If you like this video, please do like it, share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates. Thanks for watching this video. Meet you guys in another video.